Andy White here. Thanks for joining me on Faith FM here on a brand new edition of Open Up the Doors. It's a fusion of heart, mind, and soul, and I am streaming live on Facebook Live. If you go on, go on over to the Open Up the Doors Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash faithfm91.7, you can join in on the conversation there on Facebook Live. And if you join us there, please share the Facebook Live stream to your stream and join in the conversation and and, you know, ask me some questions as the as the show progresses or throw in some comments. I certainly want the show to be as interactive as possible. You can also email me at ajwhite777 at iCloud.com. That's ajwhite777 at iCloud.com if you'd like to correspond. Excuse me. If you'd like to correspond with me about anything shared on the show. I try to. I do try to keep a little bit of an eye on the comment stream here on Facebook Live because someone has a good a good comment or a good question that is pertinent to the topic at hand. I, I certainly want to engage with that as much as possible. I had been working on a show, obviously for for, for today, really for almost two weeks, <clears throat> and last night I changed it at the very last minute, and I'm probably going to do that show next week. I changed it because of the incidents that happened yesterday, and I felt in my spirit to to go with uh, commenting on the situation with the shooting of the congressman yesterday, and I want to talk about some things, about, about the anger that's in our nation, about the anger that's even in some, in the hearts of even some of us as Christians. But, you know, a, a, a terrible, terrible thing happened yesterday, as I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, are aware of, and as bad as it was, it could have been horrendously worse. A major tragedy was averted yesterday, but by the grace of God, my friends. And Representative Steve Scalise, a congressman from Louisiana, is still in critical condition after he was shot yesterday. If you don't know, and I can't imagine anybody not knowing at this stage of the game, but a gunman opened up on a, on a group of Republicans that were playing softball, prepping for a softball game that they're going to have. As a matter of fact, today, I believe, is the game. But um, it, it was just really horrible. At least six people, including Scalise, who's in critical condition, uh, who happens to be the third-ranking member of the House uh, Republican leadership. And it, it, here's where somewhat of a, a fortuitous if I could use that word in such a horrific situation. But it was fortuitous that Scalise was there. And here's the reason. Because he was the only one who had Capitol policemen uh, in his, because of his position in the Congress, he was the, they, they uh, give him a security guard of the Capitol Police. If he had not been there, if Representative Steve Scalise had not been there, there could have been, anywhere from 20 to 30 dead congressmen and staffers because none of them were armed. I'm going to get into that a little bit later in the show, a little bit, I think. But the gunman, James T. Hodgkinson, 66 years old, opened fire 
as I said, on the Republican congressmen and staffers. And this guy had a history of, of, of anger. It was, it was on his Facebook post just the other day. It's time to destroy Trump and company. He had posted recently uh, on another website, change.org, in late March that Trump is a traitor. Trump has destroyed our democracy. It's time to destroy Trump and company. According to the Shooter Hotchikin's Facebook page, he was a member of numerous left-leaning online groups. This was this is this is a splattering, a smattering of the groups he was involved with on Facebook. The road to hell is paved with Republicans. Rachel Maddow for president 2020. Yeah, right. Sanders for president 2020. Well, make up your mind. Um, actually, this guy, Hodgkinson, actually worked on Bernie Sanders' campaign. Sanders was quick to come out and condemn the action. Of course, what else could he do? He should have done that. That was the right thing to do. Another group that uh, Hodgkinson was a part of was called Terminate the Republican Party. And Donald Trump is not my president. But once again, my friends, as I said a moment ago, a, 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 a worse tragedy was averted because... Once again, the good guys with a gun stop the bad guy with a gun. Unlike what happened in London a few weeks back, uh, as I shared on the show recently, when, when the, the, the London police aren't armed at all and, they were, and, and, and the terrorists were able to slash and murder and maim their attackers and some of those policemen actually ran away because they're not allowed to carry guns. But at least here in America, we're, we're, we're a little bit more sane in that regard, really, because of our Second Amendment rights. But a good guy with the gun stopped a bad guy with the gun. And as I said, it could have been much, much worse. A mass slaughter. It was a mass slaughter waiting to happen, but by the grace of God. Senator Rand Paul was there, and I like Rand Paul. I really do. I, and I know he ran for president. I really didn't support Rand for president as much. I think he's a better senator, but I digress. But he was there yesterday practicing there. And he credited the Capitol Police officers on the scene for preventing the shooting. At, and he, said, he called it, it would have been a massacre. Rand said, quote, I can tell you that I think with absolute certainty nobody would have survived without the Capitol Hill police. They saved everybody's life incredibly brave and deserve everyone's praise because with this guy who was shooting who knows how heavily armed he was but nobody else had a weapon so he was just killing everyone or he was trying to he was he was shooting no one was killed except the shooter Hodgkinson but he was trying to kill them all he walked up to somebody before he started shooting and specifically asked who was on the ball field. Were they Republicans or were they Democrats? He was methodical and he had, he had intent of purpose. And again, to emphasize, had not Scalise been there, as so many have attested, he had a police detail. The others did not. Selah. Here, go, here we go again. It, it, this... If this proves anything, once again, it proves that draconian gun restrictions are a death sentence. And I really don't want to talk about, about gun laws today. I really don't want to get into Second Amendment stuff today. But, but you, you, to some degree, you have to because, because that's the knee-jerk reaction of, of the leftists all over the place. The minute something happens, they want to start talking about, about gun control. And they put out their lies and they put out their their. their, their the, uh, they're lies. I mean, one guy, a guy by, by the guy, a guy by the name of, uh, I think his name is Bob Frum, tweeted out yesterday. He's some kind of correspondent or journalist or something. But he tweeted out yesterday uh, a, a tweet that was nothing but lies, saying Virginia doesn't have background checks. Wrong. It's a lie. Saying that Virgin, you don't need you don't need a permit for a CCL in Virginia. I mean, this guy put out a bulleted a bulleted Twitter uh, of like four or five statements, and every single one of those things was a lie. I mean, it, it's just outrageous. But once again, without, without the armed security guards there to protect the majority whip, all those people would have been dead. And the only reason, again, the only reason was because Scalise had a police detail. But most of those Congress people, this is, this is the irony of it all. Most of those Congress people would have been armed if they had not just come out of Washington, D.C. Because, see, in Washington, D.C., it's illegal 
to protect yourself or have a concealed carry permit within the city of Washington. Now, that's been under litigation for several years. Two years ago, roughly two or three years ago, a, a federal court um, upheld a citizen's right to bear arms in Washington, D.C. So actually, the, the gun laws in Washington, D.C. have been uh, struck down as being unconstitutional. However, it's still in litigation because it was, it was appealed. So the whole situation in Washington is in flux, and as long as it's in flux, you can't carry, you can't, you know, conceal carry a handgun in Washington, D.C. Now, these senators, these congressmen have a right to protect themselves, but you see, only the, only the more important ones get the police detail. I think it's outrageous. I just think it's outrageous. And I think it's also sadly ironic that in our nation's capital, named after the founding, the founding father of our nation, George Washington, that the nation's capital denies the Second Amendment rights of its citizens and fosters unconstitutional gun restrictions. And I just think it's outrageous. And, and once again, you got all the leftists and liberals screaming for gun control, but there's not one thing that... That, that we find time and time again, there's not one law that isn't already on the books that would stop anyone who's intent on killing someone. It's a lot of useless rhetoric. And here's the real issue, because it's not a gun issue, and I don't want to really get into that, like I said that much, other than to address it briefly. The real issue here was that James D. Hodgkinson was filled with rage. It cannot be rationally de denied. It cannot be denied that his raging anger was being fueled by the incessant leftist hate speech and leftist rhetoric that we have come to be hearing now for months on end. The incessant mainstream media attacks against Trump, against the Republicans, it's, 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 at a, it's beyond the pale. It's at an unprecedented manner. Oh, yes, the leftist media has always been anti-conservative and anti-Republican. But come on, folks, everyone knows now, because it's been going on for six, seven, eight months, how utterly insane, really insane, that's the right word, utterly off the rails the left has become and the liberal media has become. Britt Hume last night, who, 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 who was a fair and balanced, no pun intended because he's on Fox, but Britt Hume is a fair and balanced journalist. Britt Hume is a, has, been, has been reporting the news for 50 years. He was on ABC for years, CBS. And he said last night, quote, because I, 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 I wrote it down as he said it when he was being interviewed last night. And Britt Hume, a veteran journalist, said this last night when he was being interviewed. We are living in the most poisonous political atmosphere that I can remember experiencing in all of my years as a reporter going back some 50 years. The, the, the hateful rhetoric is over the top, friends. The diatribes against Trump and the Republicans that go on incessantly on CNN, MSNBC, CBS, ABC, NBC, and they are nothing but duplicitous hypocrites. Now, I know that's a tautological statement. But I want to I want to be redundant. They are duplicitous and they are hypocrites. But here's here's the issue. Here's the issue. The, the, the fires of anger are being fueled. The fires of hatred are being fueled. And we are living. We are living in the midst of a lot of angry people. It would be tempting to fill this broadcast up with all the kinds of illustrations and anecdotes of the anger that's out there. We see it on the news daily now. We see it on the news all the time. The insanity that is going on in the college campuses almost on a daily basis across this country. Last week, or two weeks ago it was, I guess now, two or three weeks ago, we see, we see Kathy Griffin, this, this, this mainstream comedian, quote-unquote, holds up a mocked, severed head of Trump. And when you point it out to these people, they'll, they'll point to some, what about, you know, what so-and-so did about lynching Barack Obama? And it, it's not even a right corollary, corollary because they, they'll get one person, out of, an, an unknown person, man, I did that again, an unknown person, they'll pull out of the woodwork who did some crazy thing, an unknown person. But here we have mainstream media people. We're not talking about some, some Joe Schmo somewhere. Mainstream media people like Kathy Griffin holding up a 
severed head of, 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 of President Trump. We've got a play going on in Central Park right now, a remaking of Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. It's a modern, a modern rendition of Julius Caesar. It's so modern that, that they've got a, a guy dressed up like Donald Trump playing Julius Caesar. And he comes out, and, and, and of course Julius Caesar obviously was, was murdered and, 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 and brutally murdered. So we, we have this bloody murder scene of someone who looks just like President Trump in this play in Central Park going on right now. It's fueling the anger. It's fueling the hatred. And, and the question remains, and here's where I'm going with, with some of this. The question remains, after all is said and done, was this guy, James T. Hodgkinson, just one crazy individual? Or is he a harbinger of things to come? Is he the tip of a spear that's ready to strike. You know, many of us, myself included, for, for some time now have been warning that a, 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 a civil war could be, could be coming to our nation. Now, I don't want to overly state what happened yesterday because, like I said, tragedy was averted. But I want to rhetorically raise the, the question, you know, was, what, was this the tip of the spear? Because... Some, this is what's different about this mass shooting. Someone just wants to put this into the into the uh, the, the broad bucket of like, the, we, we, you know, we've been having these nut jobs come out, committing mass shootings for some time now. But what makes this mass shooting different than all the other mass shootings? The the Colorado movie theater shooter James Holmes, who shot up all those people in a movie theater, Dylan Roof, who shot up the congregants at a church. Jared Lee Lofner, who shot G Gabby Giffords several years back. They were all known to be mental cases. They were all known to be literally psychotics who were on meds or off their meds in some cases. But those shootings had no real political agenda. This is different. This time it's clearly evident that this shooter had a political agenda. Was he trying to spark a revolution? Was he trying to spark a civil war? And as far as any of the information that is out there about this guy, he, he was a businessman. He, he owned his own business. He held down a job. He was not a mental case in the sense of being on drugs for a mental disorder from what anyone has been able to tell us. His issue wasn't mental as much as it was political anger. And there's a lot of it out there. Now, don't misunderstand me. He certainly was deranged. Anybody who shoots innocent, unarmed people is obviously mentally deranged. Okay? Demon-possessed. But my point here is that he was not a mental case psychotic in, 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 in a clinical sense. He was filled with rage, political rage, a fire burning with inside of him. And that's where I want to go with this as the show progresses. Because as I was thinking about this yesterday and really praying about which direction to take this broadcast in today, as I said, I was preparing something else. I felt like the Lord wanted me to speak about the scripture that says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to to the devil. The mass murderers may represent the top of a volcano, but all of us need to talk about the fires within. I'm going to take a break. When I come back, I'm going to talk about, about anger and anger issues. Stick around, folks. Crossing Jordan, walk with me. Welcome back. Andy White here. You are listening to Open Up the Doors here on Faith FM, WEGB 90.7 and 93.3 in Peak, WEGQ 91.7 in Quad. Crossing Jordan is a uh, local Christian ministry here on Long Island. They lead worship over at Heart of Worship in Lindenhurst, and that's a great tune off their first CD called Walk With Me. And um, I think it... it, it, it I, I played that because it was kind of a relaxing kind of a tune, but it's the call of the Lord to walk with him. It's because it's, when we walk with the Lord, 
the, the, when we walk with the Lord, His Spirit will change us. And one of the things I, I, I really want to get to, jumping off of this, the incident from yesterday about the anger, the pent-up political anger that was in the shooter, uh, James T. Hodgkinson, yesterday. I shared the scripture at the, uh, a moment ago where it says in Ephesians, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. I felt like the Lord was saying, what fire is burning inside of you? What, what hot coal of resentment is causing you to fume? What's the, what's the temperature like in the center of your mind, in the center of your heart? Fire, temperature, heat, hot coal. The Lord was giving me those words about what it's like because one of the, there are several words in the, in the Greek text for, for anger. Uh, one word is arge, and another word is thumas. And thumas generally is translated as wrath. We get the word thermos out of thumas. And you know what a thermos is. It's, it's something you put something hot in, or cold for that matter, but generally you put something hot in a thermos, and it, and it, and it keeps it hot. It's a storage place. And I felt like the Lord was saying, don't allow your, your heart to become a thermos of anger and wrath. Don't, don't store up the heat of your temper in your heart. Because like the scripture says, you will give place to the devil. Now, there's, it's kind of probably, I know it's, it's a rhetorical question. It's kind of a silly, stupid question because I know we all get angry. But I felt like saying, does anyone here ever get mad? I mean, hot, angry, mad. I'll be honest with you, if I could be a little transparent. I've had anger issues in my own life. I've had anger issues in my past that the Lord had to really, really work out of me. You know, I, may, maybe it's something that's just uh, endemic to young men. I know there's a lot of angry young men in their 20s and 30s. We're filled with passion. But if I became a Christian, the Lord had, had to get a hold of my anger. I would just blow up like a volcano sometimes because of that, that thumos that was in me, that wrath that was in me, whatever, the, whatever reason the anger was building up in, within me. And one day, I, I lashed out at my son in a fit of anger, and he was very little at the time, and I hit him with the back of my hand. And uh, I can come to tears just talking about it now, and it happened 30-something years ago. But it was, one of the, it was one of the breaking points in my life when the Lord dealt with my anger because he, he, he did something that little boys do that are stupid and just set me off. But when I hit him, and I realized how I struck at him, and uh, he, he, he went on the floor. Could be a little open and honest here. He hit the floor, and he was holding his head, screaming, crying. And for a moment, I thought I might have broken his neck. That's how hard I hit him. And um, I was immediately broken. I realized that that was certainly not a godly indignation. And uh, I picked my son up, and I hugged him. I told him I was sorry. And I just left the house and wept before the Lord. Say so you gotta deal with this anger in me. This unrighteous anger, this this thumas, this this rage that, that that explodes like a volcano. Because when we have that pent up anger in us, it gives place to the devil. Anger is it's it's anger is part of being human. Anger is, it, 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 anger is an emotion in God. The Bible says be angry and do not sin. You see, anger is not sinful it's what you do with it it's what 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 you what, what you allow that anger to, how do you, anger is a motivating emotion it will either motivate you to do something constructively or destructively there's a good anger and there's a bad anger obviously that pent up wrath is a bad anger and at times i'm sure We've all lost our tempers. We've all lashed out in frustration. We've all silently boiled in rage over situations in our life. But more than any other element in people's lives, anger affects our relationships with one another and our happiness ultimately. And every day there are these little legions of little irritations, of course, which want to attack our joy, attack our peace, test us in our spirituality. 
But when we allow those little irritations, those little foxes to come in and ruin the vines, and they begin to develop into, into these resentments, this, this pent-up resentment, this pent-up anger, and then we allow it to build up for years. I mean, I'm talk, I want to talk to Christians right now, my brothers and sisters, who's probably the, the, the majority of this listening audience. Some of you are dealing with pent-up anger, whether it's anger uh, against your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, whatever. I know some Christians who are angry at God. I don't, I don't get that one, but okay, that's, that's reality. I, I've heard of Christians who've told me they're angry at God. But as I said a moment ago, there are primarily two Greek words for anger in the Greek texts. Orge, which is an excitement of the mind filled with violent passion. And thumos, which I explained what that was a moment ago. It's funny that we use terms like, you know, well, he got really hot under the collar. You know, he was boiling mad. He was just letting off steam, you know. But that's what thumos, it really just comes from that Greek word. About heat, the fire, with, with the, the fire, the fire that burns within. And not a good fire. I mean, we need the fire of the Holy Ghost burning in us, that's for sure. We need the fire of the zeal of the Lord burning in us. But this is a different fire. This is a fire that's birthed in hell. And the Word of God tells us in Ephesians 4.31, let all bitterness, <laughs> maybe I should digress a, a, just a moment on that word bitterness, because Paul begins with let all bitterness, because the writer of Hebrews says that not to let a bitter root spring up within you, because a bitter root defiles Many. And here Paul tells us, let all bitterness. And maybe that's, maybe bitterness, the more I think about it right now, off the cuff, it's that bitterness and resentment that fuels the fire of our anger. But here in Ephesians, let me get back to that. Let all bitterness, wrath, that word wrath in the Greek there is that word thumas. Anger, that's orge. Let all thumas, let all orge, clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice be angry and do not sin as I said a moment ago anger in itself isn't the sin the Bible tells us that that God himself gets angry in the New Testament we see there were times that Jesus got angry there are some things we ought to get angry about but do not sin let it motivate you, as I said a moment ago. That anger is that, that motivating emotion. And the question that is really before us is what are we motivated to do? Will we, will we be motivated to do something constructive or will we be motivated to do something destructive? Will we be motivated to do something helpful? If I'm angry about a, about a situation in the political realm, I should get involved with politics in a constructive manner. Maybe I, maybe I should run for, for office. You know how many people have told me I should run for office? I laugh. I couldn't be elected dog catcher. Man, <laughs> I won't even go down that road. <laughs> I laugh. That's not my calling. But you understand my point. There, there, there is an anger that should motivate us to do something. You know, so, you know, the, the, people get angry about abortion and rightfully so. And then they'll they'll get involved with with March for Life or with or with some pro-life organization because they're angry and we should be angry. That's a good anger. It's, that's, that's an anger that's motivating you to do something constructive. But if you go and blow up a, an abortion clinic, that's sin. You see, it's the same anger. It's the same anger. Some, the person that blows up the abortion clinic is angry at abortion, but that's a wrong manifestation of the motivating force of anger. March, protest, stand in front of abortion clinics, appealing and pleading with people, but don't shoot abortion doctors. Don't shoot abortion clinic workers. Don't blow up abortion clinics. That's evil. Let us not do evil in the name of good. So, again, I'm just trying to show you some comparisons, some analogies about why the Bible could say, be angry, but do not sin. Because rage and violence and resentment are destructive expressions of anger. And while a righteous indignation is a constructive expression of anger, 
Indignation will seek justice and will usually defend some other person, while rage and resentment seeks to harm another person. James tells us, I'm going to go to a break in a moment, but James tells us in James chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, This you know, my brethren, but let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak and slow to anger, for the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. We could all see that James T. Hodgkinson's anger did not did not achieve the righteousness of God. We could see quite clearly that he had this this rage, this destructive anger that he would go out and shoot people. I hope none of us in this listening listening audience would ever get that crazed and deranged that we would go out and shoot some somebody. Because blowing up with rage, shouting and screaming and fighting, are all the wrong manifestations of anger. And the Bible tells us to put it away. To put away those hidden angers. To quench that hidden fire which manifests itself. We need a spirit-controlled temperament. The fruit of the spirit which is love and joy and peace. You see, a spirit-controlled temperament will be that fire extinguisher of the anger. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, Gentleness, faithfulness, self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. Be angry and do not sin. And let the Holy Spirit breathe newness of life into you. I'm going to take a break. I'll be back with more of this. Stick around. The fusion of heart, mind, and soul. This is Open Up the Doors with Andy White here on Faith FM, WEGB. 90.7 and 93.3 in that peak. WEGQ 91.7 in Quag. Welcome back to this week's edition of Open Up the Doors, the fusion of heart, mind, and soul on a beautiful day on the east end of Long Island today. I'm looking at my, my comments on Facebook Live, and they're talking about, <laughs> talking about a puppy. They're talking about dogs. <laughs> hey, it's okay. You know, if anything can soothe a, a, a person's anger, it's it's going to be a puppy. <laughs> you want you, you, if you're getting you know, I'm talking about anger today. For those of you who might just be joining, I've been talking about about some serious issues about anger. But um, if anything could uh, calm down a tense situation, I'm sure it's a cute little puppy dog. <laughs> anyway, let me get back to this because I'm running out of time here. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 37, verse 8, cease from anger. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only leads to evil doing. And if, if there, could there be any other, and there probably really are many others, but if there's any one scripture that could be uh, the title of what we saw happen yesterday in Alexandria, Virginia. We saw, we saw a man pent up, exploding with political anger, who could, not see, who, who could not cease from his anger, who could not forsake his wrath, who could not stop from fretting. And it led to evil doing there's a lot of angry people out there as i said up at the top of the show one of the things that really really was upsetting to see was um i saw an article that had a twitter feed of people who were actually believe it or not people who were actually supporting what this deranged murderer to be thank god he didn't thank god Representative Scalise wasn't killed. Now, he's still in critical condition, and our prayers go to him, sincerely do. Our prayers go to him and his family. But even as I say that, our prayers go to him and his family. I saw, I saw on a Twitter feed yesterday 
somebody saying, don't pray for him because he's a blankety blank, 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 and all of the, the invectives and all of the, the, the curse words came out attacking Scalisi, attacking him for his political views, attacking him for, for, for whatever he voted for in Congress. And, and on this Twitter feed, all of these hate mongers, I just always find it. You want to know something that infuriates me as I talk about anger? Of course, I won't go and smack them up the side of the head or shoot them. I would not do that. That's, that's, that's not what I do with my anger. I take out my anger by preaching the gospel of truth and letting people know that there's a better way. But these people are the very ones who are always calling conservatives and Republicans hate mongers. And once again, they prove themselves to be the very thing that they accuse others of being. And here we have a man who's fighting for his life, a human being, a father, a husband, someone who's serving his country to the best of his ability based on his philosophical worldview. We're all allowed in the United States of America to have our various and different philosophical worldviews. But there were people on Twitter yesterday applauding the shooting, applauding the would-be mass murderer. Filled with their rage, filled with their hatred, filled with their vitriol, and actually applauding what James T. Hodgkinson did yesterday. And as I was reading that article that was listing all of these these uh, tweets, it was just it it it, it leaves you. It leaves you really kind of without words because you've got to be kidding me. You've really got to be kidding me. As much as I may not like somebody, I would never say in a tragedy like that any of the things that these people are saying. It's, it's, it's sad. But it goes to something else that I was alluding to earlier and that many others are saying even much more vociferously. Was that the first shot fired of a pending civil war? Is he just one deranged, angry man? Or was it the tip of a spear ready to strike? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I have been myself, I don't want to say predicting, but forewarning of a possible civil war in America. And when I see all those, that Twitter feed with all of that vitriol and all those people that were actually supportive of what this guy attempted to do yesterday, it only goes to, to feed that forewarning. It only goes to feed that, uh, what's the word I want to use? I don't want to use the word prediction because I pray it doesn't happen. But we are a country divided. I, I spoke a few weeks back that we are a house divided. But for us as Christians, for those of us who are dealing with more personal issues, the scripture says, cease from anger, forsake wrath, do not fret. It only leads to evil doing. Again, Psalm 37 does not say that anger is evil, just like Paul in Ephesians does not say anger is evil. But that anger is a path to evil when it's not constrained by the fruit of the Spirit, when it's not constrained by the Holy Spirit. Anger can turn hostility and bitterness. I'm sorry, anger can turn into hostility because of bitterness. Resentment burns. Resentment burns within our hearts when we hold on to our angry feelings. I like the way the New Living Translation translates Ephesians 4.26. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a mighty foothold to the devil. See, when we hold on to our anger, the devil can hold on to us. When we hold on to our anger, we, le we leave ourselves open to Satan's manipulation? Is that not what happened yesterday? 
I said at the top of the show that that the shooter he wasn't a mental case in the sense of being uh, of being on psychotic drugs or having a history. He had no history of mental illness at all. But he opened himself up to the devil and his lies. He opened himself up to the thief who comes to do what? To kill, st- steal, and destroy. And when we allow that thumas, that anger, that wrath to build up into us, we become more and more susceptible to Satan's temptations. We become more and more susceptible to Satan's manipulations. And it gives ground and it gives opportunity for the strategies and the schemes of the devil. That is exactly what Ephesians 4.26 is talking about. When you do not handle your anger in a correct manner. There are many things that get us angry. Some of them are rightfully so. But again, how do you deal with it? Maybe someone's hurt you. Maybe someone's maybe someone's uh, uh, offended you. I didn't re- I read I read uh, Ephesians 4:31 before, but the very next verse, verse 32, says therefore forgive one another. If you have if someone has an offense against you, forgive them. Forgiveness is a fire extinguisher for anger. Forgiveness acts as, well, I guess it's it's kind of a neat way to put it, a fire extinguisher. To cool down, our, to to vent off our our anger, to to let our anger be, be vented off in the correct manner. Holding on to anger is a choice, my friends. When the Bible tells us, uh, cease from anger, when, when, when Paul tells us in, in, in Ephesians 4.31 to, to, to let, let go of wrath and let go of anger, it tells us that holding on to anger is a choice. I've heard people say many times, oh, I can't help it. I'm just hot-headed. I can't help it. I'm just, I'm just angry. No, holding on to anger is a choice. The emotion that, 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 that erupts in a moment's time is a reaction. It's not sinful. But if you hold on to anger, if you hold on to that wrath, it is your choice. And the Word of God tells us in numerous places to cease from anger, to put away anger, showing us that it is a choice. You might say, you know, well, so many things make me angry. It's, you know, it's, not a, it's not a question of what makes you angry. Nothing makes people angry. If you are angry, you're choosing to be angry. If people are angry, if you are angry, it's because at the most fundamental level, you've chosen to be angry. Now, like I said, I, I've had anger issues in my own life. And my, my natural propensity is, is I can be hot-headed. I can, I can have a temper. God, by his grace, has mitigated my hot-headed temper trust me a lot but still every time i allow myself to flare up like a volcano and get angry i immediately feel terrible because i say god i can't believe i can't believe I'm, i let that happen to me again holy spirit come and, and really beat this thing in me i want to see where i want to go with this i only have a couple of minutes left it goes back to having, I, I think really what I want to get at in my closing thoughts is, 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 is my brothers, my sisters, is to allow the Holy Spirit to deal with whatever anger issues you might have in your own life. I trust and believe that no one listening to this broadcast would ever find themselves in the position of what that man did yesterday. God, I hope that's the case. But we're all susceptible to the devil's lies. We're all susceptible to doing things that we never thought possible. The Bible says, don't any of you think you stand strong lest you fall. And don't think you can't do something that somebody else did. Because we're all human. And we're all prone to these these failings. That's why we've got to give ourselves over to the Lord every day. And allow the Holy Spirit every day to develop His fruit in our lives. Because it's only the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives that will be able to extinguish the fires within that rage and burn with bitterness and, and hatred and malice and resentment. Oh, so many people, so many Christians I know have resentment in their hearts. But we need to have a spirit-controlled temperament. 
Suppressed anger is not a Christian peace, my, my friends. The anger is still there It's not if it's not being dealt with. It's time, my brother, my sister, if you've been bottling up anger, if you've been bottling up a pent fire within, it's time to take out the Holy Ghost fire extinguisher. Put out, I plead with you, I exhort you today, put out the fires within you before they erupt into a volcanic explosion. If there's a conflict going on in your heart, before it, be, before it flares into a rage, into an uncontrollable fire, before it causes you or others irreparable harm, cease from anger, forsake wrath, do not fret, it only leads to evil doing. <laughs> Mark Bonner, conflicts, and Jesus can heal the conflict that's going on inside of you. Get set free in Jesus' name. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. It was great having you here with me. It's time for me to go, folks. Have a great week, everybody. Keep it right here on Faith FM. There's some great, great Christian programming still to come on up. I'll see you next week, everybody. God bless. Have a great weekend.